Remember when flying was fun? An adventure for free spirits and that jet set feeling? But look at all the fossil fuel that has to be burned to get you flying high in the sky. Flying is the fastest way into the climate crisis. How dare you! But there is hope and innovative ideas. The industry is trying to reduce its carbon footprint. There are many, many reasons to believe in hydrogen. Will our flights soon be eco-friendly? What's behind the green hydrogen hype? More than 20,000 planes were in operation around the world before the pandemic, carrying over 4.5 billion passengers in 2019. Most of them were frequent flyers on domestic flights in the US and China, and they accounted for about a quarter of all aviation emissions. The problem with aviation is that a very tiny minority of the world takes a huge share of the emissions, while 80% has never sit in an airplane. Direct CO2 emissions from aviation accounted for at least 2% of global emissions in 2019. Doesn't sound like much? So unfortunately, it's the most energy intense activity that human beings can buy. And while you can get an electric car or swap meat for veggies, there isn't really a viable eco-friendly alternative to long distance air travel yet. How did we get into this? Let's go back to where it all began. The world, humans and aviation. The first days of air travel, uh, those must have been very exciting days of, you know, a promise of a world that is increasingly connected. It was a jet set activity. Flying was so exclusive because it was very expensive. This airplane is just like a limousine. Feel like a millionaire. An ordinary U.S. domestic round trip cost around $600 back in the 1970s, a whopping 4,000 bucks in today's money. But then the market was deregulated, low-cost carriers emerged, and growth became target number one. Believe it or not, this year alone, 100 million people in Asia will fly for the first time. And aviation evolved from the privilege of a few into a service for many. These are markets, this is a population that is, has a thirst um, to fly, a, a thirst for travel. They want access to the freedom and the connectivity it brings. From new airports to new markets, the sky was the limit for the aviation industry. Until 2020, when the coronavirus hit, grounding most of the world's aircraft. But the industry is expected to bounce back soon. We think that we'll see a return to pre-COVID uh, levels of traffic um, by the end of 2024. Okay, so people want to fly and will fly, but does it have to involve blasting fossil fuel emissions into the air? Perhaps not, and the industry has been quite creative in proposing alternatives. I think I count at least uh, 12, 13, 14 different technologies that have been proposed over time. This is Stefan Gössling, professor for tourism and transport in Sweden, focused on aviation since the beginning of his academic career. I think we heard uh, everything from Zeppelins uh, replacing aircraft uh, that was early in the 90s. Completely new airframe models like this one. Blended wing technology to save kerosene, solar, plant-based fuels, the so-called biofuels, were all the rage. The Dutch airline company KLM, for example, prided itself on using them. The great thing about biofuels is that we can make them using algae, sugarcane, seeds we don't eat, and even from used cooking oil. Biofuel is great for CO2, but there isn't enough of it around. That's why KLM is getting everyone together to produce biofuel on a large scale. KLM is the leading airline in biofuel. But KLM's actual share of biofuels was only 0.18% of their total fuel consumption in 2019. In the end, they were sued for misleading marketing. Very recently, a big hype about um, electric aircraft. And we were convinced that the electrical revolution would happen in aerospace as well. So we launched a fully electric-powered aircraft, which we called the EFAN-1. 
A project that was cancelled a year before it was scheduled to make its first flight. Well, as a scientist, I only have one measure of progress, and that is emissions going down. And we haven't seen that yet. Now, hydrogen is supposed to save the planet. Our belief in what hydrogen represents is most pivotal. Why? They say hydrogen has at least three striking features. Number one, it's a versatile energy carrier and can power aircraft with high energy demand, where batteries would be no alternative. Hydrogen can be made using renewable energy, meaning the production can be environmentally friendly. This so-called green hydrogen is what they want. What we're talking about here is really powering aviation with renewable energy. It does not pollute. Hydrogen, when burned, emits no CO2 and almost no air pollution, which of course is the biggest plus. Okay, sounds great, but... And 2035 is this ambitious deadline we've set to ourselves to come in service with a green aircraft, a green certified commercial aircraft. 2035? Why so late? The core challenges are to really build an aircraft that can safely run on hydrogen. Bigger storage and a whole new design will be needed before hydrogen planes can take off. And the infrastructure for hydrogen needs to be developed. From planes to refueling to production, building up a coherent hydrogen system takes time and costs a lot of money. And finally, there is simply not enough green hydrogen available yet. The share of renewables worldwide is still too low to produce enough eco-friendly hydrogen for the industry. Right now, the hydrogen we use is almost entirely made from natural gas and coal. And of course, it's all just a promise. And promises have been broken. By the time it does work, it may be too late. The problem with hydrogen is that it doesn't work yet. Well, it's simply not there yet. Despite industry assurances, we are doing absolutely everything we can to reduce the CO2 impact and work towards a, a zero emissions future. Scientists like Stefan Gössling remain skeptical. Well, after 25 years, I think I'm entitled to an opinion. So I'll just tell you right out, I don't think the sector has any interest in tackling climate change. Um, everything we've seen in terms of discussions and proposals has always just been a proposition for the future. As long as the aviation industry's business model is based on fossil fuels and growth, emissions will continue to rise. That's why activists and scientists are calling for stricter regulation. We, we need governance to, to address this problem. If we leave it to the airlines, I'm very skeptical we will see a solution. So back to our original question. Will our flights soon be eco-friendly? Put simply, no, they won't. Hydrogen will need more time to reach its potential. But we can help reduce emissions now by making choices about how we travel and traveling less whenever possible. Because technology alone will not be able to save our planet. Only we can do that. And if you like our videos, subscribe to our channel.